I just pressed it. Yeah. So my my topic is about the um, about internal triggers and advisor uh, in Kebuchet. So I noticed that with uh, the recent changes to Kebuchet, um, advisor uh, won't run because it's be been turned into like an explicit call. Um, so before what was happening was uh, the Kebuchet administrator was triggering Kebuchet runs, which then uh, would shoot off request to advisor, uh, which in general, I don't think was a, a great design originally, because um, we can directly trigger uh, advisors from inside the cluster. Um, but the the issue that I want needed to solve to make this possible was um, for each Kebuchet entry in the database, uh, they have like an associated uh, runtime environment and Python stack. So I need to turn these into um, like the JSON that uh, for the advise request. So like uh, for sending the message or, or I guess that doesn't really work because we don't send them directly in the message. So I didn't know what the best way to uh, turn these entries into advisor requests would be. Is it, uh, are you saying uh, we're using the, the internal messaging to generate a new advice? That is one part of your message, right? Yeah. And the other part is uh, we have the, what, Kebuchet installations table, and for each yeah. and every entry, we need to generate one of these messages, right? Not for every, yeah, well, yeah. For, for entries, that have uh, that the internal trigger is associated ah, with. Yes. So like a specific Correct. Python package version usually. Okay. So I need to I need to turn the um, software environment ID and the Python software stack ID into something that can be used in an advice request. And I didn't know the best way to do that if I should uh, send a request directly to user API or if I should directly send a message. Why, or, why don't if... you take these in, in environments and just put them as part of the request? Because right you, now we don't. So, so you, you want to do some call by reference kind of calling, right? Rather than call by value. Um, so. If I go through the user API, then I can directly generate the uh, uh, runtime environment and the so software stack. But if we instead go through messaging, um, we don't pass the runtime environment and software stack. They're passed by reference to, I think, um, some entry in Ceph, I think, free to, right? Yeah. So I didn't know if there was a way to direct if if there was a good way to directly go and get the message. Like since the software stack ID already exists, there should be an entry in Ceph, I think, for the software stack, but I'm not sure. I didn't know if there was a way to get that. Do we have uh, these entries in the database? Uh yeah, they should be. Um because it might be better to pick them from, from the database. Uh, you know, there were, there were some changes. And uh, I was not following closely changes. So if, if uh, the wall workflow is, uh, there is received a webhook, right, first to user API. Um, so the, the workflow is that the internal trigger gets uh, triggered, and then the Kebuchet administrator runs. And right now, Kebuchet administrator is scheduling Kebuchet, but what it should do instead is schedule advisors with the Kebuchet metadata set. And can it do requests to use the API, like uh, instead of uh... Scheduling 
So it's an internal trigger. It's not a book uh, that triggers, uh, but an internal trigger that goes uh, in, in the system. Uh, then um, uh, the internal trigger is received on investigator side, right? Yes. And the next step is that investigator what goes to the database? Uh, goes to Kebuchet administrator, runs the Kebuchet administrator workflow, which will go to the database. Yeah. Uh, uh, can we directly do it in investigator? Yeah, I think so. We can, we can move that from so that we don't need to, we can get rid of the Kebuchet administrator workflow if we do that. In that case, uh, investigator will pick required uh, inputs from the database. Yep. And will not schedule Kebuchet administrator, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so, well, mm -hmm. so I have to generate the JSON from the database entry for to make the user API request. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there, there is no. Yeah. Go ahead. So there are no possible timeouts in the investigator, right? It's asynchronous. Yeah. So there is no reason to to schedule uh, administrator. Right. Yeah. Because it's just an intermediate step. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Then yeah, I think that answers my question. The, my only question is whether or not I could directly send the uh, advise trigger message, um, but I wasn't sure because that would just be skipping the uh, request to the user API, and it would ensure that the advisor runs and doesn't hit um, cache and stuff, which I thought might be a good uh, functionality. And uh, it is still like um, we said in the beginning, if we are passing around messages on, on Kafka, uh, we do call by reference. So so we reference the software environment? Uh, I think so. Let me, let me look at the uh, advice trigger message contents. Uh, it's, it's, it's a general curiosity if that is a good design decision, because uh, that way we always uh, well, no, I was uh, thinking that we're going to keep all the Kafka messages for 15 years and we can rerun parts of that. But if the database is gone, these references are gone. Well, anyway, it's, it's okay. Maybe it's tagged up. I don't know. Ignore me. Oh. Mumble. That's it. Happy, Kevin. Yeah, I might uh, ask Frida a couple of questions outside of uh, of the uh, tech talk just for clarification. Um, but for the most part, yeah, I think that answers all of my questions. You know, so uh, I added another topic to the. Uh, um, uh, show notes uh, integration test just as a, a short follow-up from uh, yesterday's call um, 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 I, I I don't have a clear understanding of uh, which parts of our API are covered by tests um, that is why I ask H hey uh, the stuff that uh, we have created newly on a user API for you um, is it all covered is it not covered um, maybe it is a really a good idea to have one uh, one hour, one day, I don't know, the unit here uh, and really review what, what, what is tested, uh, which, which endpoints are tested, which use cases are tested and, and stuff like that. Uh, create a bunch of uh, issues. Um, I think uh, the issue that uh, Frido created has been answered by two, three, four pull requests that Frido has created. Or maybe we need uh, a few more issues and then really, really distribute them to everybody. Um, I think we have had that question yesterday, right? Is it, is it like a one person shot uh, that we are thinking about here or is it a team effort? Um, fr from my point of view, we should make it a team effort so everybody can work on it or uh, have a look at it if, if interested or um, if free. Just, just as a short comment. 
Um, um, I, I haven't followed up uh, since yesterday. Um, uh, Pep, a uh, thanks uh, for for typing uh, the, the the gibberish I'm uh, uh, producing, and uh, b uh, um, uh, do, do we have more than that one issue by uh, Frido? No, not right now. Right? Okay. Could all you guys create issues if you're gonna see something, and uh, see what uh, Gage uh, says? I I ask him to come. Uh, back and reach out to you guys, but uh, just let's have an eye on it if it really happens. Good. The suggestion is that you said together and like half a session to create those issues, right? Or like, well, uh, I don't or... know if 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 it needs to be really like like in a synchronous meeting or if everybody sits down and uh, wonders about the stuff um, he she cares about if we should create a scratch document and really put that stuff in there um um, um frito is is there an easy way to generate something like coverage i don't think so right uh, because the behave tests are usually not integrated with some kind of restful api discoveries it's it's just decoupled, right? So, yeah. Might be good. Uh, like we have a listing of uh, endpoints that we have, and uh, check if they are tested, and uh, if there needs to be like more robust tests. But I think uh, these endpoints that we have, most of them are quite simple, like they query the database. And there are a few that require like more testing or more knowledge how to how to handle the different situations, but I think we could do that. So so we're gonna we're gonna create a coverage report manually. Uh, that's basically what we need to do, right? We're gonna have a look at the uh, uh, Open Swagger or Open API uh, specification, tag each and every endpoint, figure out if it's covered by, by an integration test, right? Yeah, let's do that. Um, cool. That's it from for this topic. So we want to schedule a different time from now, uh, like time right now, we can discuss it. I'm I'm out. I I don't comment. I just want to see a result. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, so I think this was the same topic which uh, we were also discussing, uh, and we saw like at least uh, we saw the report yesterday, uh, and there were some fixes which we did from a API, but it would be good. If we can first uh, see what, what we have and fix them, and uh, we time to time visit, but we tend to like they tend to change over the period of time. So that's why there's this red color because we had made made it all green at one time, but it again came into bits and pieces. Um. Uh, uh, Kevin, coming back to the um, messaging topic, is is that something to be integrated into into some kind of integration test? Or can, can we do something like send a test message and see if it's accepted, or do we consider that so low level that we just would test Kafka availability with that? I, I think that would just test Kafka availability. Okay. Because I I think I think the only integration test we could do that were more complicated is testing like results from sending a message but those are very involved because usually the like after sending a message a lot of stuff happens in the system okay let's take that for later on so these are the few topics which are currently covered uh, in the uh, integration test. And there are some that are not yet in the, no, that are not yet covered and should yeah, be added, right? Yeah, right. Search is one you mentioned, but there, 
Might be more probably. Yeah. I think we have something like R API prod for Station Ninja. Um, am I missing something? There's a be uh, there should be an MOC and a broad, right? Okay, one is down. Uh, okay. Is there some kind of priority uh, we, we should put on it? Is, is user API more important than build log analysis? Does it help somehow? We just go through all of them. So can you say that again? Is there some kind of uh, priority we need uh, to sort the list of components you just uh, added? Is it is it that we should do user API and advices first? Is it is it good if we play around with advisors because I've seen some some timeouts, some oops, something unexpected happened on the TOS uh, search uh, web front end? Mm, maybe we should uh, have a look at that uh, dimension too. So in terms of the advice, we are running it for multiple stack. Uh, earlier it was just for Flask application, mm. but uh later uh you know i'm just quite it all the nlp ci ai uh computer vision stuff you can uh -huh. find it on this link uh there's a whole list there and i think that pretty much covers the broader spectrum of bigger packages or any stack which can be available out there correct That's good. That might be the most interesting scenario, at least um, for me right here, right now. So components missing are the search, which we were saying, uh, which user hits, and metrics could be some other thing, which we don't, are we are not doing in our integration test. I guess that itself will give it, they have their own alerts, so we might not need them in an integration test. Mm. Apart from this, I, thing, you, thing you feel. I wouldn't cover uh, metrics and, and friends. I mean, uh, hopefully operate first gives us an alert if one of the metric endpoints is down, right? Yeah. Few of which I feel is we should include as the config maps. Uh, some of them are uh, critical, like dot ceph Postgres SQ. Sorry, uh, and then there's uh, one Prometheus one. These are like some config maps which we can test. If they are in the, um, they are updated or stuff like that. But just for deployment, because there's a deployment feature, we can probably add that there. Uh, because if they are missing, then our application goes down. And we can check our databases. Uh, uh, and that's basically it for, I think. Can I? Um, yes. How, how, do you, how do you check the uh, config maps? You're going to run an integration test that is using OC get secrets or OC get config map and see if it's having the right data, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and design integration tests in a way they treat the system as black box and access uh, their API endpoints or trigger whatever is needed and see how the system behaves. So in other words, uh, integration tests, you need to know that there is a secret uh, or there is a config map, you know, because that yeah. will be very tight coupling. Um, that, is, uh, that is exactly what uh, I was uh, thinking about. Um, is it, it is a valuable test to check if uh, config map secrets have the correct data. Um, but it feels more like a uh, unit test of the deployment process. 
rather than an integration test of the application itself. Quite. Do these secrets or, or config map uh, uh, interact with the system? Like if you hit an endpoint, and is there any endpoint that requires that secret map being present? Uh, secret or config map? Uh, I mean, all of them would, but like, uh, it's more on the deployment side. So uh, I understand your point. Like technically, if they are not available, the endpoint itself will not be available. So integration test itself fails because there is some underlying issue. Uh, so I'll, I'll take that back. Uh, like I understand it might not be a right place to put that. So. Um, uh, I think on an integration test level, it would just give something like 503 servers unavailable. Yeah. Uh, that's enough information for the user at that point in time. For the operator, the information secret toth or config map toth is not available, um, might be the right one. Um, I just wonder how these um, Kubernetes guys do that for Pro itself, because I think they are, they are having the same uh, use case. Maybe we can have uh, just a, I don't know. Isn't that uh, a task for Argo CD to really validate that the config map has been deployed? Yes, yes. Oh, yeah. Hmm. So I guess just the new endpoints of user APIs, what we just need to add. Yep. Acknowledge. Like, so, yeah, this is helpful for me. I can have a look. Uh, about the API dot prod dot dot station ninja, I'm doing some maintenance in the Balrog cluster. That's the one which is pointing there. Uh, should be up in, in an hour uh, once I'm done with that. I'll, I'll ping in the group chat. OK. Cool. Thanks. Uh, I probably need that. What are these newer endpoints of API, user API? Uh, I was just assuming the changes which we made for uh, the search, which uh, Gage is working on uh, based on yeah. that. Sorry, I missed that. What? E? Nothing. Oh, okay. Uh, so that was it uh there were two things uh, which we just which came up like this week one was sli slo reporter uh, we are running slo reporter for test stage then uh smog and now we also wanted to run it for aws uh prod and so how the way we do it is we run everything in in the uh, uh cluster which is behind vpn and then send out the results uh so I've created the SLR reporter for AWS as well, but uh, the deployment uh, will stay in a different namespace, uh, just for so that so that we can segregate between these things, uh, or I can change the name naming scheme. But I feel like changing it, keeping it at same naming scheme would be helpful. So I'm just moving it into a different namespace. I'm still deciding on the resources where to put it. Once that's uh, there, I'll, I'll send out a list so that can approve it. Another uh, thing was prescription refresh job. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, uh, yeah. Slow reporter is uh, deployed on OCP for PSI, right? Yes, for all of them. Okay. Yes. But okay. in different Thanks. namespaces. Yep. Uh, uh, and then uh, there is another thing called prescription refresh job. We were talking about it last week about this. And uh, we have also created it uh, in stage cluster. But like middle tier is purely occupied by the ingestion. So we might move it around and move it to Amun inspection uh, because we are not running those many Amun inspection in in stage cluster. So that is another heads up. Uh, so we might change it, but we are testing it on. We're just still testing it on that cluster. Okay. 
So these are something which I'll put into the pull request, uh, but still saying it here so that everyone is aware of it. So with this, we should have everything in stage. Uh, and that last topic, which we discussed last uh, TikTok session about uh, having a data available, like having the whole data in one place, that would be stage. And then it will be migrated to prod uh, and small clusters. Awesome. Nice, Thanks. nicely. Um, uh, um, just uh, as another uh, question for the next step on that episode, um, the smog cluster. Uh, what is it doing right now? Uh, it is just serving Kebishet as of now, okay. and uh, yeah, we can. Like it is pretty stable, and they have moved everything to Ceph-based uh, PVCs, so it is stable we can downgrade balrog and keep this as our production but that is something it's on us to take a call on seems yeah. to be pretty stable from for our side okay so let's practice a little bit with uh, moving data around uh from stage to toss and prod uh, our balrog and uh really target that we tear down that balrog again because it's 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 a bunch of money yeah all right. I'm good. Side question. I have a side question, not directly related, but um, this stage uh, references to stage, etc. Reminded me. So we are we have a new release next week, right? I mean, there was no. Well, the, my question is: Should should I? <laughs> my practical question is: uh, There are some changes in Kevahead that. Would benefit from it's a small a small bug fixes but i see super cases coming should we create a new image and uh, but i saw some additional commits so the question is should we create a new release or patch release deploy to stage or if if it's on the to-do list already or not or how do we track this to be honest i'm not i was tempted to do it but i was thinking maybe someone else is going to do it not to clash we can release it i haven't seen the changes in javish yet but i can comment on the release cycle we did not have that uh release uh meeting this week because this was the first week and we weren't sure like how much work we will be pushing uh that's why it's not in this week and from next week onwards we'll do the same release management meetings but about javish i think we can release it and we can test it out Okay, I will try to do it and see how it goes. I'll create a new page release with image, etc. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. I think I would definitely, yeah, sorry. I think I would definitely create a minor release for Kevish. I was just looking through the commits and I think that there were um, some changes that weren't just bug fixes in there too. Sounds good.